good day. All plant pharmacists willing to participate in this initiative. I'd like to, uh, I'm happy to join you at the Patient Access Project in Poland. I'm Dr. Regis Vianco, the Director of Pharmacy at the Children's Hospital based in Ontario. And I'm very happy today to be able to help you to talk about more about patient counseling. In Canada, the pharmacists are the medication expert. They're responsible for ensuring the patient understands their medication, but also ensuring that the drugs are prescribed and provided to patients in a safe, uh, safely. And they also meet their therapeutic outcomes. Pharmacists have the authority to adapt prescription. It means the pharmacist, when they provide the medication to a patient, can either change the dose or change the formulation to make sure the patient's outcomes are. We are responsible also for patient counseling. So for every new prescription, is remanded by our College of Pharmacists to provide patient counseling to make sure they understand why they're taking medication and how to take it properly. In addition, when they come for refill, we are expected to monitor their therapy to make sure they're achieving their health outcomes. Pharmacists in Canada are trained to provide patient counseling to detect drug-related problems. This is why it's important when we meet with a patient that the it's for up to us to ensure the answer them why they're taking the medication and how to monitor their therapy. In the video that follows, you will learn how to provide patient counseling and showing you an interaction between a pharmacist and a patient. We hope that this video will help you to better understand how we expect pharmacists to communicate in Canada and help you to improve your patient care activities as well. I wish you all the best in, in your, on your work to improve patient care and we are excited to be able to support this activity long term. So good luck with these activities. How are you? Good. You? Good, thank you. Are you here to pick up a prescription? I am. Okay. And you are? I'm Lauren Dean. Hi, Lauren. How are you doing? Good. Good, good. Okay, I have your prescription here. So you are here to pick up Pradaxa. That's correct. Okay. And is this a new prescription for you? It is. Yeah. Brand new. Just starting today. Just are starting you? today, yeah. Okay. I have a few questions for you first before I go into uh, informing you about the medication. Sure. Okay. Sure. Yep. First, I have a question. We don't have it documented on your profile. Do you have any allergies to any medications? Yeah, I have allergies to uh, penicillin. Okay. And also sulfa-based drugs. Okay. Too much and I break out in a rash. Okay, so that's your reaction yeah. to yeah. both? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's rash. All right. And I actually don't have on your profile other medications that you are... Are you taking any other prescription medications? Yeah, I take uh, medications for blood pressure. Okay. And also, um, uh, I'm diabetic, so I take insulin as well. Okay. If you don't mind, I'm just taking down some notes Yeah, no, here. that's fine, sure. All right. And do you happen to have a list of your I do. medications? I do, yeah, oh, I can, can share that with you. Oh, that would be great. <clears throat> Okay. And are you taking any over-the-counter medications? Um, I take vitamin D, um, and iron pills, yep. and also uh, right now, prior to this, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on low-dose aspirin. Okay. All right. Okay, so I see here you're taking uh, some furosemide, mm -hmm. so 40 milligrams once in the morning, once in the evening. That's right. And that's for your blood pressure. You're also taking amlodipine and atorvastatin, so mm -hmm. a combined medication. Again, that's for uh, blood pressure and also for cholesterol once in the morning. You're taking bisoprolol, a half a tablet in the evening. Mm -hmm. That's for your blood pressure. You're taking spironolactone, half a tablet again in the evening, and that helps with blood pressure and with, with fluid. You're taking Xeroxalin, so once in the morning, once in the evening. And then I see your iron pills. And this is your insulin regimen yep, here. That's right. Okay, so that's great. So the first question I have for you pertaining to your new prescription, which is Pradaxa, it's also called Dabigatran, is what did your doctor tell you about this medication? Well, he told me that, that basically the low-dose aspirin wasn't doing the job okay um, and then we needed to you know go to something that would be a little bit stronger and you know help you know control that aspect okay okay have you ever heard of uh, a condition called atrial fibrillation no no okay so has your doctor do doctors never talked to you about atrial fibrillation not, not to any extent no okay all right 
So this, that's what this medication is used for. Uh, so atrial fibrillation is actually an irregular heart rhythm. Okay. Okay. And what happens with someone who has an irregular heart rhythm, the blood can pool or almost pool, yeah, pool within the heart. Okay. And this pooling within the heart of the blood can form clots. And if the clot is dislodged from the heart, it can actually cause strokes. Okay. Okay. Right. Yep. So this medication is being used to prevent strokes in individuals who have atrial fibrillation. Okay. Okay. So it, it is thinning the blood. Okay. Um, What's the advantage of this over the, the aspirin? That's a that's a great question. So you were on low dose aspirin, and mm -hmm. I do see from your medical history you do have high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. You are you also have diabetes. Okay. So the benefit of ha of taking a low dose aspirin is with the antiplatelet effect. Okay. So there's two ways that clots can form by platelets but then also by another coagulation cascade. So coagulation essentially means clotting, mm -hmm. okay? So the aspirin, you continue to take the aspirin, that's going to help with preventing platelets from forming clots. Yep, okay. This medication is going to prevent the other method of a clot okay. forming, okay. okay? So that is the benefit. So it's two aspects, the low-dose aspirin doesn't control what this does. Absolutely, okay. correct. It's two yeah. different mechanisms in which clots can be formed. Okay. Okay, so you absolutely have it correctly. So it's another aspect of prevention, basically. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, so this medication here, so dabigatran, you take one capsule in the morning mm -hmm. and one capsule in the evening. Okay. So it actually aligns well with, you're taking some medications in the morning yes. and in the evening. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one way that may help you to remember to take this medication yep. is, is combine it with your medications that you're also taking in the morning mm -hmm. and, in, in the, and in the evening. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's also a few other things to note about this medication. So we've added some labels here to help with reminders. So this label here, again, is a reminder to take it once in the morning and once in the evening. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's also this one here that you cannot open the capsules. Okay. Okay. So are you, are, do you, have you ever had any problems swallowing capsules? No. No, no. so you have no problems swallowing no. pills. I can take four or five pills at a time. Okay, okay, <laughs> that's great. So then there will be no need to, to no. open up the capsules. That's wonderful. So now let's talk about some side effects about the medication. Okay. All right. Um, so do you have any concerns right now? Have you read up on this medication? Well, it talks about the possibility of bleeding and, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's a bit of a concern. I mean, mm -hmm. is, what, what do I have to watch for on there? You know, what, what, what action should I take and that yep. sort of thing? Yep, absolutely. So you are correct in that this medication can increase your risk of bleeding. Okay. Okay. So things to watch out for is certainly ensure that you aren't put into a situation where you may fall easily, okay? Because um, certainly if you fall and hit your head, you are at increased risk of having of having a bleed. Okay. okay. Yep. Sure. Should that ever happen, you need to call your physician right away or go to the nearest emergency department. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else that may increase your risk of bleeding? So something as simple as brushing your teeth. Mm -hmm. Okay. So your your gums may bleed a bit easier when you're performing dental hygiene. Okay. So purchase a soft bristle toothbrush. Okay. Yep. And when you're flossing your teeth. Be sure to take care that you're not letting the floss hit your gums very, mm. very hard, yeah. okay? Um, and if you do cut yourself, say if you're shaving, okay, in the morning, uh, you may notice that, that a little nick may bleed a little bit longer than you have been mm -hmm. used to, okay? okay. Another suggestion uh, that certainly you may take into account is um, using an electric razor. Okay. So the risk of cutting yourself with an electric la razor is much Reduced. lower. Reduced, yep. yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, are there any other concerns that you have about the risk of bleeding? No, no, I, I think it's basically just, you know, taking care and watching what you're doing and that sort of thing. And, you know, if something does happen, then, you know, assess whether you need to go get it looked at, you know, more seriously or whatever. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. No. It's also very important uh, that you make sure that 
all physicians are aware that you are taking this medication. Okay. okay so your family physician, if you do, you have any uh, specialist physicians that you that you go yeah, see? Yeah, yeah, I have a couple that I go to. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it's very important that they are aware that you're taking this medication. Yeah. Okay, and also myself as your pharmacist, I'm now aware that you're taking this medication. And should you go to any other pharmacy, that they are aware that you're taking mm -hmm. this medication. Okay. Now, does this have uh, any effect on uh, kidney function? So it, it does have an, it doesn't have an effect on kidney function. Okay. Certainly if, if, do you, do you have uh, kidney dysfunction? Yeah. You do. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it is important that this medication, it, it is cleared through the kidney. Okay. okay. So that's how that's how your body will will eliminate the medication from mm -hmm. from your body. Okay. So if you do have kidney dysfunction, uh, your physician will have to monitor to ensure that this medication, or at least that your dose, is not too high. Yeah. Okay. okay. So do you have any follow up uh, blood work that your physician has scheduled? Yeah, I go you? every six months. Okay. I Perfect. go I go to a nephrology specialist every six months. Perfect. And he does blood work. I do blood work before I go. Okay, so, so it's important to let your nephrologist know, that, know that I'm on that now. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And if there's any follow-up that he may want to do sooner than six months yeah. from now, yeah. then then he will he will he will schedule yeah. that for you. Yeah, no, okay. I'll let them know. I'll call and let them know. Okay, perfect, perfect. Now, when it comes to taking over-the-counter medications, you did say that you were taking the low-dose aspirin. Yep. Okay. When you have a headache or if you have an ache and pain, uh, what type of what type of pain relief medication do you usually Tylen use? Tylenol extra strength. Okay, great, yeah. perfect. Yeah. So you can continue to take Tylenol with this medication. Okay. You just have to avoid anything like an Advil okay. or a leave. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I've tried to leave, it doesn't work for me. Oh, okay. So I, I find that the extra strength Tylenol works a lot better. Wonderful, yeah. that's yeah. great. So the extra strength Tylenol will works well with this medication. There yeah. are no interactions okay. with this Good. medication, okay? And um, do you experience heartburn at any time? Nope. No? No. Okay. No issues there, no. Okay, great. No. If you cer certainly do experience heartburn, make sure you come in and see me, mm -hmm. and I can talk to you about what appropriate medications uh, okay. that you can take for heartburn, because there are some medications that are available over the counter that will, again, interact with the with your dabigatron. Okay, okay, sure. Okay? Good. Uh, so be sure to come back and see, see me, should you need to take any other over-the-counter medication. Lauren, do you have any interest in taking any herbal medications? Well, I've looked at a number of them, but I haven't had, you know, anything that really pops into mind other than, you know, I take some vitamin D, basically, mm -hmm, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, nothing else. No, not really. Okay. Not, not at this stage. Okay. All right. If you are interested in taking some herbal medications, please make sure you come back and you see me, and, and um, I can certainly provide you with some information on some herbal medications. Okay. Because uh, there are some herbal medications that will interact with dabigatran. Okay. And therefore, they need to be avoided. Okay. So, okay. want to know what those are before you start playing with that stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, come and see me before you... Before sure. you try any herbal medications. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. All right, Lauren. So, do you have any more questions on your new Dibigatran prescription? No. No, I think I'm good for now. Okay. Yep. All right. Well, certainly, if you have any questions, uh, please be sure to give me a call here. Okay. I'll do that. Yep. Uh, we also have this pamphlet here that I'll send you home with okay. that has some more information about Dibigatran. Good. All right. Super. So I'll just put this in a bag here for you. Go. Great. Thank Have you very great much day. for your help. It was nice meeting you. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello. My name is Katie Hollis, and I am the manager of the pharmacy department here at the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario, and I'm also a clinical pharmacist. Okay, so now we'll take a few minutes to reflect on the counseling interaction that you just witnessed, and I will point out a few key elements to effective counseling on patients. The first are the five S's of effective communication. Be sincere, keep it short, simple, and specific, and be sure to summarize at the end. Mm -hmm. Sincerity is reflected in both verbal and nonverbal communication. With verbal communication, please ensure to have a sincere tone of voice and ensure to have a positive attitude. With nonverbal communication, body language is key. As you have, may have noticed in the patient counseling that you, that you witnessed, 
you will see that my body is facing the patient and I have an open posture. I am not crossing my arms and my hands are flat on the counter and I am making direct eye contact with the patient. There is space between myself and the patient. If you do feel that the patient is going to be speaking about confidential matters, it is best to, to ask the patient if they would like to go to a separate area of the pharmacy or perhaps decrease the distance between yourself and the patient. Always verifying with the patient that this is correct. Another tool for effective counseling is to use open-ended questioning as much as possible. This will ensure that you can elicit more information from the patient and that you are, are not leading the patient. Open-ended questioning means that the answer is not a yes or no answer. Active listening shows that you are listening to what the patient has said. This allows you to summarize and rephrase what the patient has told you to ensure that you can confirm your understanding of what the patient is telling you. There are three types of active listening responses. There's the restatement response. This is when you repeat what the patient has told you to again confirm understanding of what the patient is telling you. There's the reflective response. This verbalizes both the content of what the patient has told you but also shows empathy to what the patient is telling you and showing that you understand their current emotion. Then there's the clarifying response. This verbalizes both the content and the feelings, and it also summarizes what the patient has told you. And again, this helps to confirm that you understand what the patient is telling you, which is very important in the pharmacist-patient relationship. And finally, Demonstrating empathy is very important. Empathy is defined as putting yourself into someone else's situation. This helps to develop and establish of the pharmacist-patient relationship. It also helps to ensure that the patient has confidence in you as the pharmacist. Showing empathy also establishes that caring relationship. Demonstrating empathy can be done in many different ways. Empathy can be demonstrated with reflection by stating, I can see that you are, and then follow up with your interpretation of how the patient is feeling. Allow the patient to confirm that this is correct, or allow them to restate how they truly are feeling showing the patient support, telling them that you want to help them, that you are there to support them through this. Also establishing a partnership with your patient. Tell them that you are going to work with them on this and that you are in it together. Provide your support, ensure that they know that you are there to support them and also ensure that they have your contact information at the pharmacy so that they can contact you whenever they have questions. And finally, showing the patient respect. This is the foundational principle to the pharmacist-patient relationship. Emphasize that they are doing great. Tell them and support them and encourage them throughout the interaction and again, this lends even more to showing your support to the patient. Placing all of these elements together will help to ensure a positive and effective interaction with your patient. And it will also, in the long term, develop that pharmacist-patient relationship based on trust and confidence.